everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are coming to you live from Longyearbyen in Svalbard, Norway, and we are so excited to be here today. My name is Elisa McCall with Polar Bears International, and we are here with Mission Blue. So I'm going to introduce you to the Mission Blue team and what they do here in just a minute. Those of you watching on PBI's Facebook, Explore.org's Facebook, or Mission Blue's Facebook, please be sure to send in questions in the chat comments there. We have someone monitoring questions and texting me, so I'm going to be really rude and looking at my phone throughout this broadcast, but it's to see what you want to hear about. If you aren't watching on Facebook and maybe you're watching on PBI's website, you can email questions at pbears.org and we'll also try to answer your questions that way. So we are so excited to be here today. So excited the weather is beautiful. It's been a lovely day. Yesterday rained and was gray, but today's perfect. And it's warm-ish. It's about plus six, which is maybe low 40s Fahrenheit, I think. Okay, so plus six Celsius. And we're surrounded by birds. We probably won't see a live polar bear, but they have been around town just within the last week. So we do have people behind the scenes keeping an eye out for polar bears. And I can also answer some of your polar bear questions in just a minute. So I want to introduce the team. I'm going to pass you down so everyone can give a little bit of background and you know what people can talk about today. And then we're going to kind of just give you some more context about what we're doing here, what the polar bears are doing here, and what we're going to see later this week when we are on the ship that we're going on. So Kip, could you first introduce yourself maybe and tell us why you're here? Yeah, so I'm Kip Evans. I am the expeditions director for Mission Blue. I've been with Mission Blue for 10 years now and I help lead our Hope Spot expeditions all over the world, places like Cocos Island or sometimes the areas like the Galapagos. But this is our very first trip, Mission Blue trip, to the Arctic and I'm really excited and honored to be here with the polar bear team and also my colleagues from Mission Blue. Oh, thanks. We're so grateful to be here with you guys. Yeah. And Laura. Hi, I'm Laura Cassiani. I am Executive Director of Mission Blue. Um, Mission Blue is, was founded by Dr. Sylvia Earle. And the, the purpose of Mission Blue is really to ignite support for a network of marine protected areas around the world so that we can uh, just all unite to protect the ocean. Most people, when they look at the ocean, just think of blue waves, but actually the ocean is a very complex ecosystem that makes all life possible. And so for this trip, we were fortunate enough to get funding from our wonderful corporate partner, Biotherm, and they have funded this expedition. So we're here and excited to share the view with you. Thank you so much. And we're also very excited to be joined by Carl today from IUCN. Hello, I'm Carl Gustav Lundin. I run the Global Marine and Polar Program for the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. But I also have the privilege of working with Sylvia Earle's Foundation Mission Blue. So I've actually been uh, on a few of the Mission Blue expeditions already with Kip and the team. Um, here I'm really looking forward to seeing what's actually happening up here. As we all know, there's a lot of changes taking place in the Arctic right now. So I'm trying to understand a little better what is actually happening, what's the impacts, and perhaps what do we need to do in terms of conserve these areas. So we are in one of the best protected areas in the world. There's lots of protection in this area, but still there's many changes and we're not seeing the types of increases in some of the populations as we would have liked. So it's also understanding what's the dynamic, what's happening, and what needs to happen to improve conservation here in the Arctic. here faster than anywhere else in the Arctic and the polar bears here already have 20 weeks less of habitat than they did compared to several decades ago and that's compared to areas like Hudson Bay which has three to four weeks less of habitat so here you can see it's just changing so quickly which means the polar bears are having to deal with some changes really fast now polar bears international does have a research program here our maternal den cam study some of you might have heard of that before and I'll talk about that later in the week maybe uh, but I wanted to circle back I think it was already mentioned once that this is called the Spitsbergen Hope Spot Expedition. What is Spitsbergen and what really are we trying to accomplish during Hope Spot Expeditions? Well, our, our goals this week are similar to what we've done um, on previous expeditions. We're really trying to raise global awareness around the conservation of certain species. For example, we've worked with sharks in the past. Um, this week, we're really honored to be looking at species that are being affected by climate change, polar bears, as you just mentioned. And so our goal for the next, you know, seven, eight days is to create short documentaries about specific problems that are affecting the Arctic. 
So um, we're also looking at biodiversity and how climate change might be affecting biodiversity. We're going to be doing a short piece on polar diving. What's going on below the, the ocean surface here? And um, we're very fortunate to uh, have Scuba Pro as one of our sponsors. They've set us up with the perfect equipment for the Arctic. Uh, I'll be shooting a red cinema camera, cinema 5K camera, um, housed by Gates. And uh, we're looking forward to sharing the footage with all our viewers around the world. Um, Spitsbergen is a very, very unique place. Most people that come here only see what's above the surface. And to be able to go underwater and share that view will be something I think it'll be very special. Are you worried um, about getting cold? I, <laughs> it's kind of cold here, so you know, I can't imagine. But uh, we, we wear uh, long underwear, if you believe it or not, under our dry suits. So I think I'll be fairly warm and, and cozy when we go underwater. But the dives will be short, you know, about 30, 30 minutes long. Okay. Um, in addition to uh, looking beneath the sea, we're, we're going to be looking at other things, too, along the journey. Plastics. We are now realizing that there's a lot of plastic pollution all over the world, but it's even affecting here at Spitsbergen. So it'll be another area for us to concentrate on during the trip. And um, really, one of the most amazing things that everyone knows about the Arctic, or if you don't, you should know about, is the wildlife. And so we're going to spend a lot of effort looking for not only polar bears, but walrus and other iconic species that I'm sure you'll be interested in. So we look forward to sharing, um, sharing the view with you as we, as we move through this week. Totally. And I'm really hoping that we get to see beluga in this area because yeah. many Explore.org viewers know that we have a beluga cam that runs and we're about to launch it in the next two or three weeks. So excited. Yeah. But I've only ever seen belugas in Canada. So to see belugas here would be amazing. And I also wanted to circle back to the pollution thing. That is a big issue for polar bears here. So usually we come to you live from Churchill, uh, where we're seeing major body declines in some of those bears. Here, the body conditions are better on the surface, but underneath, these are actually the most polluted polar bears in the world. The way that the currents work, they're bringing up all sorts of different chemicals into these bears' bodies. And with polar bears being at the top of the food chain, eating all this marine mammal fat that these pollutants really like to live in. Uh, these polar bears are dealing with a lot of more hormonal issues, um, issues with their sex organs compared to other bears in Canada that we work on. So it's really interesting. We're fascinated to be here. When it comes to plastic pollution, we're really seeing that there is a hot spot of concentration of um, plastic forming all over, and particularly these microplastics. So as the sea ice melts, you know, they, they actually there seems to be small pieces of plastic that uh, gets concentrated in the ice. When it melts, uh, it gets eaten by zooplankton together with all the other phytoplankton, and then that gets eaten by smaller fish, and that goes on all the way, all the way up to the polar bear. So we're really seeing so no, a dramatic shift here right now. Plastic, You'd think like this is a really pristine wilderness, but even here, there's actually a lot of human footprint already. And it's just incredible how what we do where we live can affect the Arctic. It is. And, and our sharks. Yeah. And if you think about what Carl said, of time make their way up through the food chain and ultimately we're Come consuming mm -hmm. fish from the ocean not just the polar bears and so of course we're not consuming a, fish on this expedition that's yeah, of course not. we don't <laughs> we're on, we're on the <laughs> mission we, we don't we are, fish we are on consuming these fish with not only plastic but mercury and other heavy metals and so um, this is this is an, an expedition um, about awareness and all the issues not only the incredible wildlife that we're going to see but also what we're putting into the ocean in fact, there are 10,000 different chemicals we put in wow. plastic, and we have no idea how these different chemicals interact either. So, it, you know, we're living a, a big, huge experiment right now, and we don't have, have any idea what actually the outcome will be. That's incredible. We are so lucky it's this warm. Yep. All right, so those of you maybe watching, our battery mixer just went down for a minute. Uh, so we're just having a quick stall in communications here. And we should be back up and running. Okay, so we're just having a great discussion about the ocean and the importance of protecting it and how humans are impacting it. The ocean really is the heart of the climate. So just as our heart pushes nutrients and blood throughout our body, so does the ocean push uh, moisture and humidity and 
just regulates the earth. And so if we don't take care of the ocean, uh, it's not able to take care of us. And so we really need to keep it healthy. And Mission Blue does such a fantastic job of talking about that. And Laura, I was wondering if you, you were saying earlier, just this mix of science and outreach and how you guys like to talk about what you do. And I found it amazing. Maybe you could talk a little bit more about things that Mission Blue does. Well, yeah, at Mission Blue, um, what we try to do, we have 92 hope spots around the world, and we wow. have scientists and uh, government agencies and just communities all working together to try to, uh, the scientists do the research to understand what's happening, but then the next step is for the community to really understand the science and be knowledgeable, and then the end game is to get governments to really kick up their game and protect these areas. If we don't... Um, if we don't really all work together on this planet to protect the ocean, we are putting all life on Earth in danger. So at Mission Blue, we, we celebrate the science, we, we try to highlight the science, and we also really focus on making um, these areas of the ocean an inspiration for everybody. You don't have to be a scientist to engage in ocean conservation. Everybody can engage. And it's fascinating, and it's, and it's fun, and we all need to just you know, join hands and, and get the work done. Absolutely. Thank you for that. And there's so many ways that you can get involved. So one of the, well, the biggest issue right now that we're really looking at is climate change impacting um, us all over the world, especially Arctic sea ice. And as we burn fossil fuels, we're releasing carbon dioxide into the air, and that acts like a heat trapping blanket in the atmosphere. And in regular amounts, that's okay. But we're pumping rampant amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, and we're thickening that heat trapping blanket, and we're just trapping too much heat too quickly. So we really need to move to renewable energies, things like solar and wind and away from fossil fuels. And we can all do that. There are so many solutions happening all over the world right now. It's super, super exciting. And there's a lot of places you can look, but there's even things you can do day to day uh, that you might consider doing. And maybe you guys could talk about some of the asks we have for people to think about doing at their own home. I mean, an interesting thing is we're actually in a coal mining town here. We are. This yeah. used to be started really as a whaling and that was used as energy at that time. They used the whale blubber to put the lighting in London, for example. So here we've had a long transition of energy. And fortunately now, I think people here in Norway are looking at all kinds of alternatives as well. So there is a drive, I think, that's really trying to find better solutions that we can live with for a planet that actually will be alive. So I think there's many things you can do at home. I mean, one of them, of course, is think before you turn up the heat or you drive everywhere or you do various things. So there's small things you can do. Perhaps also looking at your plastic footprint. We're starting to wonder if there's actually a connection between climate change and small pieces of plastic and sea ice. So it's quite possible that you know, we're lowering the melting point. We're just doing research in Canada and in the, the Baltic Sea to try to understand the linkage here better. So that's another angle. Don't waste plastic. Make sure that you recycle it. Make sure that you have a prudent use of, of all the energy that you're using. That's fantastic. And maybe I'll give a quick shout out. One of our uh, sponsors is 4Ocean. I'm wearing a 4Ocean bracelet right now. And they pull plastic out of the oceans. And this is a special Polar Bear Edition bracelet uh, supporting their work doing that, looking at plastics in the ocean. Anything else you would like to add about what we're hoping people can do to get involved and pay attention to Mission Blue? Um, well, I think even just paying attention to what you eat really matters. Mm -hmm. um, if you follow Mission Blue, you know that we will ask everybody maybe not to give up fish or give up sea wildlife it's your choice but think about it you know if you are going to eat wildlife just understand that that, that wild fish does an important role out there in our ocean and eating tuna sushi at your local bar is it has an impact it has an impact so if you if you are going to eat it, it's your choice but just be conscious that it is having an impact and all wildlife is needed in the ocean right now it helps mitigate all the threats that are that are happening at the same time so the more wildlife that stays in the ocean the the better for the ocean and the better for us I'd like to mention too Thanks. on our social media channels during this trip we're going to be putting out some helpful tips and some links where you can actually go and explore things that you can do personally at home to help reduce your carbon footprint and one of them for example would be to go in and figure out what your actual carbon footprint is so yeah. Go to our Facebook page or Instagram page and you'll see that information over the next few days. Oh, thank you so much. That's great information. So if anyone has last minute questions, please email them to questions at pbears.org. But we will start wrapping up. But this is not the last you will see of us. <laughs> we will also be doing this at the same time tomorrow. 
Uh, so June 21st, so it will be about 6 p.m. our time, 9 a.m. Pacific. Uh, you'll notice that even though it is the evening for us, we're all wearing our sunglasses right now because the sun is right at us. It is the land of the midnight sun right now and tomorrow will be the solstice so we will see uh, how bright it is tomorrow. It'll be looking like this I'm sure without the cloud cover which is great. I am going to quickly answer a few polar bear questions that have come in. Uh, there's been quite a few. So what time of year are polar bears most active? Depends where they live in the world. So there are 19 different polar bear populations. We are in the Barents Sea population. Polar bears are going to be most active when they're hunting seal. So usually during the winter. At this time of year, some polar bears will be on land right now. Those we are hoping to see in the next week. And they will be resting and conserving energy because they don't have access to their food. So they do fast when they're not hunting seals. And how many cubs do polar bears have at a time? Uh, they usually have one or two. They can have triplets and younger females tend to have one cub at a time. And then have the populations declined? Well, in some regions they have declined due to climate change. So we have a population off Alaska and a couple in Canada that have really dealt with habitat loss issues, which leads to fewer calories, which leads to poor conditioned bodies, fewer cubs, and over time fewer bears. The bears here in Svalbard were actually hunted quite heavily in the last century. And so we did see a big reduction in this population. They've since bounced back since they had a hunting regulations regulations put in place, but they've never bounced back to historical levels because of this habitat loss. And so we'll be talking more about that this week. We'll be posting things online. I'm going to be posting with KT Miller, who's helping us pull this off. We're going to post some sea ice graphs and that for you to see the massive changes that have occurred in this region. And tomorrow when we chat, we're going to have some more props for you too. We're going to get a little more in depth about the amazing ship we're going on. And we're going to talk a little bit more about Arctic diving because it's just fascinating the things that uh, you have to think about when you're going in such cold water and then what we hope to see underwater and bring back to everybody. So any last minute comments before we sign off and go find some dinner? I'd just like to add that, um, you know, we're really excited to have you on this journey with us. And there are other members of our expedition team that we'll yeah. be looking forward to introducing you to as well. And so um, for tonight, um, you know, we're going to say, you know, adios. But I think it's just really the beginning of an amazing journey that, um, you know, we get to share with you. Yeah. Anything else to add? I'm good. We're good. It's wonderful to be out here. I'm really enjoying to be here. <coughs> but I sorry. <coughs> hey, you lost your voice. I lost my voice. <laughs> Whisper in my ear and I'll translate. <laughs> Well, Polar Bears International is just so grateful to be a part of this trip with these amazing people on such an important mission. Uh, we really thank you for tuning in and for your patience with some delays and trying to broadcast live from this area that's so far north and remote. It's really exciting to be able to do this. Thank you to Explore.org for helping us pull this off and our other big sponsors, Scuba Pro, Biotherm. Yeah, yeah, helping make this all happen. So yeah, stay tuned and we will talk to you tomorrow and keep sending in your questions because I'm going to keep an eye on them. So until tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.